Hey, here's another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're going to be talking about TIG welding techniques for uh, sheet metal. And this is pretty thick sheet metal. Today we're using 11 gauge hot rolled carbon steel. It's been ground clean. You've got to get that mill scale off carbon steel if you want to do any good at all on TIG welding. I'm going to talk about some lap joints and butt joints and then I'm going to do a shameless plug for the TIG finger at the end. So be forewarned. Lap joints, I like to go straight forward and I like to pull the electrode back a little bit when I'm dipping rod. I sharpen a lot less electrodes this way. It almost looks like the current is pulsing, but actually what I'm doing is I keep the current, the uh, tip, very tight while I'm pushing that puddle ahead so I can get it down into that root of the joint, and then I pull it back a little bit, backwards, and lengthen the arc a little bit while I add rod, but all in a straight line. So it'd be kind of hard to walk the cup and do all this, so that's why I like to you know, use a different technique than walking the cup on sheet metal. Here's a butt joint, same metal, small chamfer uh, with a gap, and you can see I'm doing the pretty much the exact same thing. I move ahead with a tight arc, and then I pull it back and back up a little bit while I add rod. So, you know, it's, it's almost the exact same technique for lap joints and butt joints here. Things look a little bit different. You've got to pay attention to some to little different things. Like on the butt, you need to watch this thing. Every time you pull the rod out, you've got to watch that puddle and make sure it's going all the way into those sharp corners in the root of the joint to make sure you're getting penetration. But other than that, it's, it's, it's roughly the same uh, exact motion, straight forward and back, straight forward and back. You don't really have to do the back thing. You can just straight forward and pause but I find it helps to lengthen the arc just a little bit when you add rod and again you sharpen a whole lot uh, fewer electrodes that way. Now another way here is just using a slightly bigger rod for the butt joint and just laying the rod in there. It's a lot less motion so uh, and it tends to look pretty nice but you're never really quite sure if you're uh, penetrating because you can't see the puddle and how, what it's doing you, you know into the root of the joint. So for out of position joints, you know, uh, we're going to talk about using the uh, TIG finger heat shield here. I position the same thing on a 45 angle, so there's really it's kind of hard to find a place to prop, and this stuff gets hot pretty quick. So if you uh, hold your finger too close to the weld, you can only weld about a, an inch before you're, you're screaming in pain. So you know, slipping the TIG finger on cures all that, lets you slide and go as far as you want to. Because it's got more thicknesses on one side and the other, you can just flip it around if you want to change uh, places you want to prop, and you can hold it right next to the area where you're welding and go for long distances without your fingers screaming for you to stop. So again, we're using a straight forward and back technique here, pushing it forward, pausing, or maybe even pulling pulling the arc length back a little bit while we add, but all in a straight line, forward and back, or forward, pause, and dip, forward, pause, and dip, one or the other. They're both very similar, but... Uh, Sometimes you do things without even realizing it. I, oftentimes I pull it backwards and uh, I find that that's a very good technique that just kind of a one size fits all for sheet metal forward and then pull back a little bit. All right, so that's it for today. That's TIG welding lap joints and butt joints using the forward, uh, straight forward and back technique, lengthening your arc just a little bit while you're adding rod. You can click on the link at the bottom of this YouTube video and learn more about the TIG finger and decide if one is uh, for you. And I appreciate you watching WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.